Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, what happened in the Crossword Championship? If you're wondering that and you've come here to find out, we don't know. There's no champion. Nothing has happened. So, I know Simon's already mentioned this. I'm just going to take you back to this was me at 10 past 10 this morning. Um, just logged on to the Times Crossword Club website where the crosswords were to be published. And indeed, they were here somewhere. So yeah, I'm just going to play. So this is me. I'm going to practice a previous puzzle. I've already seen there may be a problem with the website. And I'm wondering if the puzzle is going to come up at all. But this is the yesterday's puzzle, actually, Friday's puzzle. Now, this is not my actual solving speed. I've speeded this bit up, as you can see from the clock running in the corner. But I wanted to see whether it would accept you know obviously you can play the puzzle that's fine but would it accept the submission of the solution i wish i could type this fast let alone solve this fast that would really improve my chances in this theoretical online championship anyway the championship was meant to begin at 10 30 so at the time i'm typing this in there's 15 minutes left everybody around the world is presumably logging in the thing having been advertised now it will slow down to the speed of me actually waiting to see if this gets submitted. And I mean, this website is generally quite slow. It's very frustrating that it takes a few seconds to submit a crossword, but this time the page isn't working. So again, I've speeded up this bit. This is me just trying to get around the website, go using the back button, then trying to do it again. And it basically just doesn't happen. So we could never get into the website um, there were quite a lot of online communications on various social media going around trying to find out what was going on. It turns out from messages on those that, well, unsurprisingly, the um, Times servers had become overwhelmed by the volume of interest and people logging on to the site. Now, I mean, you can say what you like. I do feel a bit of sympathy for the organizers. And an hour or more after the competition, the page changed to this. So you can see that the three competition puzzles, they're all loaded up and ready to go. They have not been um, allowed out yet. And now the competition has been postponed by 24 hours. So it will be happening tomorrow at 10.30 UK time. And anybody competing has really only had 23 hours notice of that, but at least it is still going ahead. I have to say when, when these problems were happening, I was assuming they would never run it. Now, whether the servers can handle the volume of traffic tomorrow who knows I don't know I don't I don't know what the problem was um, my wife suggested maybe it was a classic case of the um, admins bringing the system down over the weekend because nobody would be using it not having found out there was a competition going on and that might be the case I don't know now I mean this isn't the only thing that's happened at a um, a puzzle final um, I remember a classic incident must be 10 years ago at the uh, time Sudoku final, where one of the eight competitors in the grand final, as it was called, um, they were given their sheet of four puzzles to solve, but somehow attached to the back of it was another page which had one of the puzzles on it. Um, repeat, it was a repeat, but honestly, when you're solving classic Sudoku, you probably don't notice if two of the puzzles you attempt are actually the same. And uh, this particular competitor didn't notice when they finished, there were five puzzles done on their script instead of four. And uh, the organizer just said, hmm, yes, well, they finished fourth. And I don't think the, uh, I don't think it would have been affected. The result would have been affected by the fact that they had an extra puzzle to do. An astonishing decision in my view, but there we go. Um, I do have other war stories from puzzle competitions in person um, and indeed online. So maybe we'll put some of those in the book. Uh, that might be the way to communicate them. Anyway, that was all about the crossword championship, but I am going to try a sort of Sudoku today. So here is the puzzle. And this is a very interesting one. This has been on the uh, Discord site. So you know, this is an example of the sort of thinking that's going on on there. And this is not a flag of Cornwall, as you might think if you're from that area. This is the net of a cube. 
So we're not, the black cells are nothing to do with this puzzle. We're just looking at the white cells. And this is a Kropke cube net, basically. Um, now, Kropke is the form of Sudoku, a variant form that we've mentioned before, in which the dots, uh, black dots, show a relation between two cells that means that one is the other divided by two. So in these two cells, for instance, in either order, that could be 4, 8, 3, 6, 2, 1, or 1, 2. Now, if you're looking at this grid, I must mention we're not using the number 9 today. We're using 1 to 8 only. And what you have to do... Sorry, let me finish off the crop key first. That would be sensible. The black dots are a ratio of 1, of two, of one to 2. The white dots are a difference of 1. And now sometimes in Kropke, and in this case, a negative constraint applies so that all possible dots are shown. Now, that's not even all the dots you can see on the screen that are the possible ones that are shown, because you have to imagine that this is a cube, and you effectively have to, at least in your head, cut out and create the cube, and then every um, run of eight digits around it has to be the different digits one to eight. And all possible dots are shown. Now, what I mean by that is that not only for this plane surface um, section of the cube, if you like, are all dots shown, but for instance, that cell and that cell are connected together. Once you, what I'm gonna do, I think, is imagine this as the top of the cube and the other side's folded down and this face folded around to the bottom but you can see if you do that, though these two sides here share an edge. And that means these two cells share an edge together and they don't have a black or white dot, or you could see it. And these two as well share an edge, but they don't have a black or white dot. So that is how this puzzle works. I mean, it's very much a case of normal Sudoku rules do not apply. So just to repeat, we're looking at the numbers one to eight they need to be, uh, we need to use each of the numbers one to eight in every row, so once the cube is made. So that's one row. There are basically six rows. That's another. A third is made basically by this ring around here, because once you fold all the edges down, and this is the top in white, this is the kind of first slice of your little Rubik's cube. Another of the edges, therefore, another of the rows is that like that. The other two involve this run of six, and when you fold that down, it'll be those two that make up the row, and then this one to make up the sixth row. So we've got six rows in various forms of one to eight, and all the crop key dots we need are given, ratios of one to two in black, um, consecutive numbers in white. Now, one and two, could be given either a black or white dot, and we don't necessarily know. So well done to Glipperol for creating this. I mean, what a brilliant idea. And he's been having, I don't know if it's he, Glipperol has been having several of these. Um, so very happy to try this out on the, on the channel. So do have a go on the link under the video. You obviously won't be able to create this in 3D. You'll have to imagine that. But I'm finally gonna have a go now. So let's get cracking. And how? Right, we've got only the numbers one, two, eight. I suppose there's so few dots here. Are we meant to focus on five and seven, which don't, which can't be on a black dot? Not really. I mean, you have to bear in mind this sort of region just doesn't matter. It only matters in as much as that's part of one row, that's part of another, that's part of a third, that's part of a fourth. Okay, so what can be on the black dots? It can't be five or seven, so it can be any of one, two, three, four, six, or eight. Right, these two join together. So they can't involve, they're, I mean, by which I mean they're consecutive. So they can't involve six and eight. That means that these two can't involve three, although they could still involve four if that was a two. So that doesn't really butter my parsnips at all. Um, 
Oh, hang on, yeah, these can't be one, two as a sequence. Right, yeah, these two either have to be one, two, two, three, or three, four in some order. That must be how this white dot works, given these possibilities now. Now, if they were one, two, these two would have to be two and four to make the black dot ratios work, and they cannot be two and four because they would need a black dot between them. So one is not part of these cells. That doesn't let me remove two from here because four could be, but three is definitely part of these cells. So that's something. We've learned a little something there. Three can't be in those, six can't be in those. Now what though? Um, I'm going to color this row, this row, um, sort of row of eight cells. That's one of the extra regions. And this is another. Now, having done that, I can't really do the others. Obviously, that's a third, and this is a fourth. They're quite easy to see. Now, the one that's hard to see, the two that are hard to see, if you like, are that one and that one. But any colouring I do of those is going to really mess with what we've got. So I can't really do that. Um, but three is in one of those two. What does that mean for us? Maybe we should work on... Right, if three was on the bottom... I mean, okay, I shouldn't do this, but... It's extremely hard to visualise what it means if three is on the bottom. And I'm going to... You, you will consider this a bifurcation, and if somebody has a better way of looking at this, they can post it and you can study their post, their comment. But if that was three, this is six. Now, this can't be three now. That's interesting actually. This can't be six. Those are easy to do, but this also can't be six and this can't be three or there'd be a dot. This being two or four means this can't be two or four or there'd be a dot, definitely, whatever the relationship was. So this can now only be two, three or four to go with whatever that is. This is two or four. That could still be all of them. That's annoying. Well, that's getting quite interesting. This can't be two in this case anymore because of that being two, three or four, there'd be some sort of dot if that was two. Same's true for four. It can't be four. If this is all based on this being three, I'll just purple that so we know what we're basing these assumptions on. Um, this can't be two or four or it would get a white dot next to a three. And that means this can now only be two or four because it's next to one or eight with a black dot. This is quite restrictive now. Oh, look, where's three going to go in the blue? Oh, that's fascinating. Where can three go in the blue? Not in those. It's been ruled out. Not here or here. They're in that row. Not here. It's in the column sort of thing that we see. And definitely not here or here, because it would get a dot with that. So three would have to be here. And then you can ask, where does two go, I think? Clearly it can go here, but it can't go here or here. Now remember, this cell is next to that cell once you fold the cube down. So two would need a dot. In fact, two and four would both need a dot in either of those positions. They can't be there. They'd need a dot to that one. So two and four now form this weird pair between those cells. Um, 
six could only be there or there. Oh, this is so strange. The trouble is, this is working. This might be right. Um, I kind of thought this was the most restricted thing to look at, so it'll probably blow up quite quickly. Uh, but anyway, let's just carry on. Actually, this dot pair now can't be 3, 6 because of that 3. So they must come from 1, 2, 4, and 8. And that gives us a quadruple in the row. So all of the others are 5, 6, and 7. And that this won't work because you... These are in, remember, this wraps around. So this is like a torus. This is a consecutive run of three digits with five, six, and seven, no dots between them. Where's the six gonna go? It's gonna have to be next to at least the five or the seven. So there is no way that is right. And that all proves that the three cannot go there. And there may be a different way of proving that, but it's good enough for me. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not going to ask Simon to solve this after me if I get through it. I'm just going to go with how I've proved that that's not a three. Somebody, as I say, may write in the comments, they often do, about how there's a more logical solve path, but that works. So that must be the three. This is not three. This one is now six, and I mean, we've actually got two digits in the grid that are definitely right which is quite exciting um that can't be three and that can't be six they'd need black dots this one can't be two or four it would need a white dot that means this is two or four it's kind of the opposite of the way that we were looking at it with a three here oh what else can we do if anything uh, but this is a bit more open-ended now now with two or four there, the two could take one or four, the four could take two or eight. So they're all possible, annoyingly possible. This can't be two or four though. It would need a dot to that two or four, either way round. Oh yes, so again, this is one, six or eight. So this must be two, three or four. Um, and that means this can't be two or four. Surely all of those would need a dot. If two was here, it would need, it can't be next to a two just by Sudoku. A three would need a white dot, a four would need a black dot. If this was four, two would need a black dot, four, three would need a white dot, four is impossible. So that's not two or four, that's one or eight. This is such a strange puzzle. Um, Now what? I mean, it's quite, I find it quite exciting, I have to say. Sorry if that makes me sad. Um, now, okay, let's have a look at these blue cells again then. Maybe they will be, they're not as helpful actually, this time. I don't think. Although, hang on, these can't be two or four. We've had the three on the blue cells. This can't be two or four. Ooh. These can't both be two or four, or they'd be next to each other. So that must be two or four, and then the other one of two or four is in one of those. It gives us a two, four pair in this long row across the grid. Doesn't say anything about that. Right, come on, come on, keep going. There must be something else good. Now, let's look at this run around again. Where? I don't know. If that was six, where would five go? No, that's not profitable. Oh, I can't believe this line of inquiries petered out at this point. I mean, I thought we were really doing something good here. Um, does this black dot come into it again? Not really, because this could still be 3, 6. Shh. 
sure that maybe this 2-4 can help in some way. Or maybe maybe I need to consider the, the blue ring a bit harder. What, what am I missing about that? Um, I don't know. If that was 1, this would be 2. This couldn't be one, and that couldn't be two, but that wouldn't actually help. Um, no, I think each of those pairs only rules one of the possible pairs out of that pair of uh, black cells. Maybe I need to be looking at the green. Yeah, okay, two and four there. Well, that just means that can't be three. It does also mean which cell connects to the 2 and 4 in this little block. It's that one. When that gets folded under, it's touching that. So that can't be 3. Yeah, in this row, where does 3 go? It can't be there because it would be touching that 2 and 4. can't be there because it would be touching both of those, actually. can't be there. So it's in one of these two cells. Um, and therefore, they can't be with a 6. Where does 6 go? It can't go here because it's next to that one. So 6 must now be on one of the outer edges. <sighs> this doesn't feel intensely helpful now, I have to say. Um, I might be missing something. I'm sorry. What, what am I missing? Wow, this is a very different sort of problem, isn't it? Really thought we'd got got a good breakthrough with that 6-3 getting placed, and it, it does seem I'm coming up short. Maybe maybe it's time to bifurcate again, disappointingly. Um now one of one or eight is there. The other one can't be here, interestingly, because if that's a one, it forces that to be a four, and now that can't be the eight. And the same would be true if that's an 8, it makes that a 2, and that can't be the 1. So the 1, 8 is not there, and it's not there for exactly the same reason the other way round. Anything to stop it being in one of these three? That one would connect with that cell, but 1 and 8 can be next to each other. This one connects again with that cell. doesn't help. And it could even be there connecting with the 2 or 4 because it could be the other form. It doesn't have that tight relationship with those. Okay, let's look down this column then. I don't know. I don't know that that's giving me anything. I'm going to have to try one of these versions and see what happens. Let's try this as a 2. And we'll colour it purple to say that's what we're basing this assumption on. Then we get a 1 here, and that's a 4 now. This can't be 2, and this can't be 1. Although, as we noticed before, we don't get much further. Ooh, where does 2 go in the blue now? Not there. Not there next to a 4. Not there in the same column as a 2. Not there next to a 3 or 4, because that would need a dot. So 2 would go here. Now where does 1 go? Not next to the 2, there or there. Remember, if you fold it down, that's part of a ring. So the 1 would go here. 6, 3, 2. We've got 5, 7 and 8 to go. 7 and 8 can't be next to each other. So 5 must be in one of those cells. That's 7 or 8. These are from 5, 7 and 8. That's a problem here. This can't be 7, because it's definitely next to 6 or 8, and there's no dot. Um, 3, 2... If that's 8, 5, 1... You'd have to have 6 and 7 separated by the 4, which would be there. That is possible. Oh, come on, come on. Right. 
wow, this is a weird puzzle, as I keep saying, that just is true. Three, two, six, seven, five. Okay, where does the one go in this column, which is all one column? It doesn't go in those two cells because of those two ones. So it must go on one outer edge or the other of this bit of the column. Actually, they don't touch. So I must bear that in mind. Um, it obviously can go in there. If it went here, then it touches this cell. Doesn't help particularly. Ah, oh, no, now I need to look at this black dot. Yes, we've got one and two in this row. So this is from three, four, three, six, or four, eight. It's one of those. Actually, that can't be a three, so that can't be a six. This can't be a four either next to the two, so that can't be an eight. So these are quite restricted. You get a two, six, eight triple, three, four pair outside one. These two have to be five and seven. This can't be six now. Oh, yes, it can. It's on the white dot. In fact, probably is six. It's either six or eight. It has to be even because that's odd. Um, oh, this can't be six, three because one of these is a three and whichever way around it was, if that's six, three, it would touch it. Oh, well, that's quite interesting. We could maybe go back and use that without bifurcating, but I'm not sure if it helps. But anyway, it helps now. That makes that eight, four, seven, five. This has to be six. I think this could work. It really seems to be continually continuing to go. Three there, six there. This can't be five now, so that's eight. This has to be five now to not have a dot next to eight. So the blues are all done. Six, three, seven, two, eight, five, one, four. The greens, ah, oh, this has become a one. That makes that a two. We've got eight, seven, four. That's in this ring. Ah! Oh. And the eight's now going to have to be next to the seven, is it? Just visualizing my cube. Yes, it is. Whether the eight is there or there, it is next to that seven. In fact, the four can't be there or there either, because there it would be next to the five with no dot. Here it would be in the same row as a four. My goodness, so that's finally broken. I don't know if it broke earlier and I didn't spot it. That is quite possible, but the two is not there. So we unwind all the way back to that. In a way, I've been a bit lucky to prove the negative, prove what's wrong, so we know what's right. Wow. Okay, again, you know, apologies if you don't like bifurcation. I'm afraid it's the only way I'm guaranteed to finish this. So that is a four. Let's just have a look at this. Now we know this is not three, six because of the three being in one of those cells and no dots between them. So that's from one, two, four, and eight, which doesn't actually help yet. Okay, right, but four there, we know this is eight. This can't be four, this can't be eight. Oh, now we have to start again virtually, right? That's two, two, eight, four. Now let's look at the blues. That's what we do next. Where does four go? Not there or there, because it would need a dot to two or three. Not there or there, because it's by such Sudoku as we're allowed, it can't be. So four there, that's not two or four now. And therefore that's not one or eight. And in fact, it can't be four, so that's two. That's one, that's six, that's three. We're getting the right answer now. Now we have five, seven, and eight, and the five has to separate the seven and eight to stop them being together and not getting a dot. So that's there. The other two are seven and eight. Ah, oh, I love it when it starts working. This is just a good feeling. Right, five is next to either six or four, can't be a four, so that is a six. Six, two, eight, four. Now we've got all the odds. One, three, five, seven to go here. This one can't be three or five because it's next to four. Uh, that can't be one or three because it's next to two. Never mind about that. Go back to the blue ring. Two, six, three, four. Where does five go? Got to be here. Can't be here because there'd be a dot. 
This is 1, 7, or 8, but it can't be 7 because it's next to 6. So, so they're an unresolved blinking triple. Ah, right, 6. Ah, this is the same column as this one. So that can't be 8. That is 7. Um, in fact, 6, 8, 3, 5, 7 got one, two, and four to go in these three cells. So that one can be one or two. Oh, and there's no dot. That has to be next to this one. So they have to be one and four. So that's one. This is four. That's two and one there. That makes this eight. And suddenly we're finishing, I think. That can't be seven. So it's five, seven there to complete that row, whatever we're calling it, and something's gone wrong. Something has gone wrong. What have I done wrong now? These column things work. So how have I got two fours in this row? I can't put a four there next to a three. Two, six. This is, it was all fine. Let's go back a bit. What have I assumed wrong here? Let's go back to putting the four in. Right, we were somewhere like here. We've put the four in. This has to be eight. And this has to be two. This can't be eight. There's no dot. So this can't be four. That's okay so far. Try and redo this logic. Where does three go? It doesn't go there, 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 or there. So three goes here. Where does two go in the blue? Not next to the three. Oh, we've done two in the blue, sorry. Um, where does one, no. In fact, three, we've done three in the blue. Sorry, I should not be asking where does three go? It already exists there. I'm losing my mind now. Six, three, two. I mean, this isn't going to work again, is it? But what's gone wrong? Four. Can't be there or there. It would need a dot to the two or three. Four is there. That's what that is. So they don't have a four, and therefore they can't have an eight. They are one and two. That puts six and three there. Six, three, two, four. We've got one, five, eight, and seven to place in the blue. Five can't be there or there because it would be next to that four. So five's in one of those cells. One can't be next to the two. That's not all that helpful. Eight, I don't know. Okay, let's have a look at this run. Three, six, four, one, two. Yes, this joins on to this. And the five must separate the seven and eight. It must do. So this is the five. Seven and eight go there. This is next to the five and it can't be four. That's six. This is all looking hideously familiar. So one, three, five, and seven go there. This can't be three or five. Um, but let's go on back to the green ring now. Six, five, that can't be five now. Five can't be there because it would be next to the six. So in fact, that places the five in this row. Um, six, eight, three. Ah, yes, that eight is in the same column as this eight. That is partly that. Visualizing again, yes, that has to be right. So that's seven. That makes this eight. We haven't broken the rule yet. One, two there. This can't be one though, and this can't be seven now. So we get a useful triple, but this can't be th three because it's next to that six. So one there, seven, three. This can't be two now, one, two. So they're all done. And they're done in a way that looks really good. Um, 
Now the blue, we have 1 and 5 to place, so the 1 has to be next to the 6, because the 5 can't be. That fixes 8 and 4 at the top. 8, 6, 3, 4, 6, 1, 5, 2. That seems to be working now. 4, 6, 8, 3, 5, 1, 7. I don't even know what I did wrong before, but I'm sure this is right. So let's have a look at the, I mean, the check function is going to be obviously totally useless. Right, that is okay from using all eight digits. Um, I can't see any reason why it breaks the crop key rules. This one, 5, 8, 3, 6, 4, 1, 2, 7. Again, I cannot see any problems with that crop key wise. Let's have a look at this blue row of 63741582. Again, I think crop key is fine there. 48317256. Yes. And then finally, these sort of column ones 4685327171. And that connects to the four. That's all right. Eight three four six one seven two five and back to the eight. Yes, there is the solution. I'm sorry about how long it took me, how 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 much bifurcation there was, and the full Sally. I don't know what went wrong with that. I could go back and find out, but I'm sure you'll tell me. Um, very interesting puzzle. I really like the idea. Um, I'm not sure I want to do another one again in a hurry, but that. That's brilliantly clever. I have a feeling to get this few dots in this arrangement is, in, is a serious feat by Glipperal. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, and thanks to the guys on Discord for recommending it. Really interesting puzzle. Um, and tomorrow, let's hope they get the Times Crossword Championship running properly. And uh, we'll see how that goes. And we'll let you know, obviously. Uh, I know Simon's going to take part as well. So we'll let you know how we do. Um, hope to see you tomorrow evening and bye for now.